This is a short introduction to the PRM in XML documentation tool. This tool is intended for generating documentation for Riscos components. For the purposes of this video, you will need access to a Linux or MacOS system to generate the documentation. Whilst the tools will work on Riscos, this is not the intent of this demonstration. The first thing we need to do is to obtain a copy of the PRM in XML tool. This can be found on GitHub, so let's go get it. We go to github.com slash jerf slash riscos hyphen prm in xml hyphen tool. Here you can see all the sources for the tool and the example documentation that is used to check that the features work. We just want the latest version, so I'm going to use the pre-release version. We go to releases and we can see the pre-release version here. It describes all the changes that have happened and shows the assets. There are some examples here that show generated documentation from our tests. We don't need those here, we just want the POSIX version. Okay, that's downloaded. Now we move to a terminal so that we can extract the tool. We need to move it from our downloads directory and extract it. Slash downloads slash POSIX something. There we go. Move that to here. Okay, there's the tool. To extract, we just need to use a tar command. ZXVF, that's decompressed gzip, extract, verbose, and the file is POSIX that. There we go, that's extracted them. And we can run the tool to see that it's installed properly. There we go, that's the help information. There are quite a few options and some help text to work with the tool. Fuller documentation can be found in the docs directory and supplied resources. If we scroll up to the help messages, you can see the many options that we have. There are also some example command lines here to show how to use it. In order to use the tool, we will also need a copy of the XSLT proc and XML lint tools. If you're running on macOS, these will already be installed. If you're running on Ubuntu Linux or other um, Linux-based systems, you can install them. For, Linux, for Ubuntu, it will be a command something like this. XSLT proc xml2. I'm running on macOS, so I don't need to do that. You could install the MISCOS PRM and XML tool in your path. You just need to copy it along with the resource directory and it will work just fine. Having obtained the tool, we can now create a new document. For simplicity, I'm going to document a single SWI call. Usually you'd be documenting more than that, but you should find it relatively easy to expand from there. The first thing to do is to create a new skeleton document. Starting from a skeleton is a lot easier than creating a document from scratch. So to do that we do viscos prm and it's f skeleton skeleton minus o my sy xml. That's the name of the file we're going to create. And so we can now see that we've created a new file and it has in it examples which you can change to create your own documentation. It also shows you a command which can be used to create the HTML documentation. So let's load up the file and see what we have. Here's the file. And you can see there's a whole bunch of um, skeleton information that describes what you can do and how it should be used. I'm going to skim through the sections that we're not interested in, deleting them as I go. There are only a few that we need to edit for this demonstration. Feel free to examine the others and change them at your leisure. The first thing we need to include is the chapter title. As I'm only documenting the SWI OSWrite 0, I'm going to give it the title Writing Messages. So here we go, let's update the title, Writing Messages. Normally you'd name the title after the module or the functionality that you're describing. 
There's usually an introduction in the chapter which includes some words about the module or the area that is being documented. I'll just write an example sentence here and you can probably explain more in a real document. So, in RISCOS you can print messages with a diff with different swys. Os swy right zero is one example. That's good enough. We don't need any of these subsections, so I can go and delete those. Usually you'd expand on things with subsections to describe more information about what you're documenting. There are also some other sections that are documenting things here. We don't need these, so I can delete them. So I'm going to delete the overview, the terminology, technical details, and here we have some VDU codes. So this is one of the VDU codes is one of the sections that describes definitions, um, and that describes the different major parts of the operating system's interfaces. We don't need the VDU codes, and here we have system variables. Now we don't need that, and we don't need service calls. There we go. And now we've got SWI calls. This is an example SWI definition, which is le led into by a paragraph that describes how to write them. We can delete the paragraph because we don't need that. Each of the parts of the SWI definition can be filled in. There are some example text in there which you can decide what you want to do with. If you've got more than one SWI to define, you might want to copy the whole thing so you've got other templates to work with. We're only documenting one, so we only need this one. First thing to do is to change the name. So the first one is OSWrite0, we're just documenting. And then we've got the SWI number in hex, which is number two. And then we describe succinctly what it means. And this one we can just say prints a zero terminated message to the VDU stream. There are other parameters here which show other parts of the interface. There's an IRQ, an FIQs, processor mode and re-entrancy. Usually you won't need to change these, but occasionally you'll need to. So IQ mode is undefined and it can be in any state. FIQs will almost certainly be enabled all the time. The processor will stay in SVC mode for the SWI call. And this SWI happens to be re-entrant, so we can actually change this to say yes. Next we have the registers that are set on entry. These are the values that you pass to the SWI. There's only one register passed to OSWrite0, and that's R0, which is the string to print. So we can document that. Register number 0, and that is pointer, pointer to 0 terminated string to write. The register and exit are just as important. OSWrite0 returns a pointer to the byte after the terminator. But there's also a table here. We don't need the table. That would be used if you wanted to describe more information about the different types of return values or the parameters that were being passed. To the byte after. There we go. Let's delete that. And there we are. The use section describes what the SWI call does. You should be as descriptive as you need for the interface. If there is detail that's more general, it should go in the more general technical details section. But here we just want to say what the call does so people know how to use it. This SWI will write the supplied string to the output stream via the WORCH vector. Sometimes interfaces will need to be extended, or bugs might be fixed. 
The compatibility section allows these changes to be described, together with what version of the system or the module that they apply to. We don't need it here for this interface, so let's delete it. If you have other SWI calls that need documenting, you might include references to them in the related section. We don't have them here, so we will skip this. However, we could have included a reference to the work vector, as it has been referenced here. OK, that is our SWI being that has been documented. We now need to delete the remaining sections that are given as examples, because we don't need those either. Let's go through these. So we don't need any software vectors. They're all vectors. There's up calls. We don't need them. Entry points. We don't need to document them. Error messages. We don't need those. WIMP messages. Toolbox methods. Toolbox events. Star commands. And long examples. We don't need any of those, so they can be deleted. And that ends the chapter. At the bottom, there's a section for document metadata. This might not seem important, but it's really useful to know what has changed. Most documentation will be updated, and knowing which version of the document you're looking at can sometimes help. I'll just fill in some details here. Here we go. My name and email address as the maintainer. Any disclaimers and uh, copyright information. And then some history information about what has happened. So my name, today's date, and what we did. Documented for a presentation. You can also have some external links to documentation elsewhere. We don't need those here. And that's it, we have a document. So let's save that there, and then go back to the terminal. And here it's written an example command for us to use. So we can actually run that command and it will generate the document. If there were any problems with the generation, it would print them out here. OK, if we have a look. We can see that it has generated a HTML file as well. There we are. And we can now open it into the browser. So I'm going to open it into the browser I'm using for the demonstration. Swipe.html. Here we go. And there we are. We now have a HTML document which includes all the content that we've described, together with a content section here that lets you jump to each of the parts of the document. If I scroll down, you can see the SWI details are all present, and the metadata here appears at the bottom. And it's all in the same style that the standard programmer's reference manuals use. There are lots of different ways that you can use the documentation system. Uh, you don't have to use the same sections that the standard PRMs used, uh, but the skeleton gives you the general usage and how, how the um, main documents were um, structured. There are additional examples available. If you want to find them, you can go to GitHub and you can look, use the topic PRM in XML. So if we go to github.com slash topics, PRM in XML will take you to that topic. And these are just grouped together. So we've got some examples from Icon Borders, some specific examples, the tool itself, and then the staging area, which includes a number of documents and functional specs, which have been um, converted to PRM in XML format. I hope this helps you produce some useful documentation. Thank you for listening.